LSAT 70, Game 3, we have a series of lectures on birds, O, P, R, S, and T, and they're each going to be in a room, either G or H. So we've set this up as a double ordering problem, where we have one row for the topic of the lecture, another for the location. And we're given the following conditions. The first lecture is in room G, the fourth lecture is in room H, exactly three of the lectures are in room G, and then we have that the lecture on S is before the one on O, and it's in room H. T is before P, which is in room G. So with those, let's see if we can answer our acceptable situation question. So we have that S is before O, and so that rules out A, which has O before S. T is before P, and that rules out B. And now, we know that S is in room H, so it can't be first. But answer choice D has S first. P is in room G, so it can't be fourth. And so C doesn't satisfy that condition. So E is the choice that satisfies all of these conditions. One of the conditions they gave us is that we have exactly three lectures in room G. So if there's exactly three there, there must be two in H. So it's useful to write down what we have left to work with. We've got two G's left, because one of them is there, and one H left, because one of them is there, right? So that's the way I want to represent that our, that we have exactly three lectures in Gladwin Hall. For the other conditions, I don't see a, a way we can combine these conditions or make any conclusions or usefully split into to worlds. So we'll move forward with, with the conditions as we have them written here. Number 20 asks us, which of the following must be false? So we have five answer choices. We're going to try them out and see if we get to a contradiction. And I'm looking for a quick contradiction. If the first and second are in G, do I have a problem? I need to have a, another G somewhere else, an H somewhere. I don't see, see a problem immediately, so I'm moving on. Second and third in H. Second and third in H. Okay, there's a problem. That's three H's. We don't have room for three G's, so this must be false. We can't have H, H, H. So let's check the others out just to make sure nothing's terribly wrong with them. If the second and fifth were in G, yeah, then we'd end up with H's in the third and fourth spot. That seems like that could be fine. D says third and fourth and H, which is exactly what we have there. And E says third and fifth are G. Third and fifth G. So we'd have to have an H here. I don't see what would be wrong with that. So B must be false. Number 21 says, if T is an H, which could be the third lecture? So if we have that T has to be an H, now we're a lot more restricted here. What could be third? So let's think about where could T be now that we know it's an H. It could be in the fourth, but it, it couldn't be in the fifth because it has P after it, right? Maybe the third, um, maybe the second, but not first because that's got to be G. So let's... Let's make some copies here and, and see how this goes. So if I try T here in the second spot with H, then this has to be G and this has to be G, right? And then S has to be with the other H and O is after it, so O has to be there. T is before P, so P would have to be there and so R would have to be here, okay? Now, if T was here in the third spot, the other H has to be S. And now we have a big problem because 
s has to be before o and t has to be before p there's not room for both of those there so this one doesn't work we can't have t in the third spot t in the fourth spot would tell us that p in g would be in the fifth spot then we need s with h before o so s and h are going to have to be here right s can't be in the first spot because it can't be in g so it has to be in the second spot so it has room to have o after it right this is going to have to be g and r again here okay so we found two different ways that these things would work. What's third? Well, it could be P and G. It could be O and G. O and G is one of our choices. P and G is not, and all of the other ones are not possibilities because we figured out exactly the two ways that this new hypothesis could be met. Number 22 asks, which could be the fifth lecture? Well, the fifth lecture is the last lecture. The last lecture has nothing after it. So S and T are immediately eliminated because they each have something after them. Now, S always has to be an H and P always has to be in G. So let's check to make sure we don't have an answer that violates that. And here P and H is no good. So let's try out the other two. If I have O and G for the last one, well then I could have s and h right before it i could have t p and g i'm just trying to satisfy these conditions any way that i can r is the thing that's left i have to have another h okay i've satisfied all the conditions so a could be a description of the fifth lecture let's check this one out to make sure it doesn't work So if I have R and H here, okay, that's two H's, right? I've used up all my H's. So I have to have G here and G here. And now S has to be an H. And now I'm done because S has to have O after it, but there's no room for that because R's there. So Z does not work. A is the only one that could be fifth. Number 23 says, if the third lecture is on S, which of the following could be true? So we'll add our hypothesis. We've got an S here. Now, O has to be after S. So I'm just going to put O here with a switch to say we don't know which spot it's in. S has to be an H, so this has to be an H here. We have to have G here and a G here. Okay. And then we've got r t and p and there's a variety of possibilities so let's just go ahead and look and see which of these could be true um, the second lecture is o no o is either fourth or fifth the fifth lecture is o in h no our fifth lecture is in g so that can't be our second lecture is r and h our second lecture has to be g so that's no good our second lecture is T and G. Okay, let's hang on to that. That seems possible for, for now, but let's look at this. Fourth lecture is T and H. Oh, let's see. Well, let's try out these last two. So if I have, I'm going to try E first. If T is an H, that forces O to the fifth spot, but T has to have P after it. So that doesn't work, right? We have no place for the P. This condition can't be satisfied. So E is out. So back to O is in one of these. We don't know which. Uh, T and G for the second spot. Okay. Well, P has to be after T. There's only one spot after T. And it's the spot that O is not in. But P has to be with G. So... P has to be in the fifth spot, and now that forces O into the fourth spot. R is left here. So we've got T before P, which is in G, S and H before O, 
we've satisfied all of our conditions, D is the one that could be true. 